I think it's shameful that a veteran would attack another veteran. Uh, Governor Walz served honorably for 24 years in the National Guard. After 20 years, you are eligible to retire at any time you deem necessary. They talk about him missing his deployment. Well, maybe Mr. Vance should ask the real question. What is the National Guard doing deploying to a foreign country in a foreign war? So I think that uh, Vance is doing a disservice to himself and a disservice to the United States Marine Corps. I know a lot of great Marines and Marines show respect and Vance is not showing respect. And let's talk, let's continue. Who does he have respect for? Donald Trump, the biggest draft dodger from the Vietnam War, the rich white boy who bought his way out of it. I come from South Minneapolis. My friends and I didn't get out of it. We either got drafted or we enlisted. I know six or seven or eight of my friends. Donald Trump was your typical rich white boy who didn't have to serve in Vietnam because he could buy his way out of it. And that's who Vance is standing with, this guy who leads from the rear. Do you want to take a look at Jesse Ventura, the former governor of Minnesota, of last Minnesota. night on CNN? Last night on CNN. Yes. Let's take a look at this, guys. This is absolutely awesome. As you know, we're big fans of Jesse, the body Ventura over here on the Vanguard. We've had the former governor on the show a number of times. We made a little documentary actually about Governor Jesse Ventura, where Zach and I drove to Minneapolis to interview the man, the legend in person about how he won the governorship of Minnesota in 1998 as a third party independent candidate still i think the only uh you know person to do yep. that at that level to win the governorship of a state as a third party independent guy and you know for the most part jesse ventura only endorses third party and independent candidates he very rarely if ever throws his support behind a duopoly candidate uh, so for those reasons among others that you guys are about to see I think this clip is very, very important. And I think that Jesse actually speaks for a lot of people uh, that are, you know, traditionally of the same mindset, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hear it from the governor himself. One of the crazy experiences of our entire career was sitting in front of this man in Tyrell's living room, listening to him tell stories about talking to Fidel Castro about the Kennedy assassination. Guys, check out our documentary we made about this guy. He's an incredible figure. If you're not familiar with him, not only was he a WWE superstar, he was a Navy SEAL before they were Navy SEALs. He calls them frogmen. You're going to hear about it if you check out our documentary. Great guy. Incredible American original. You know, wrote the anthem to the Mongol biker gang. You know, crazy. Presumptive Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Walls, the governor of Minnesota, touting his service, the National Guard, at a campaign rally tonight in Arizona. It comes as Republican VP candidate Senator J.D. Vance criticizes Walls' record, accusing him of abandoning his National Guard unit in 2005 mm -hmm. to run for Congress before a deployment to Iraq. Well, joining me now, former independent governor of Minnesota, Jesse Ventura. He endorsed Walls in his recent run for governor. Governor Ventura, thank you so much for joining me this evening. I'm really eager to hear your take on this because you are a former, former Navy SEAL. You served in Vietnam. And I have to ask you what you think of this attack from the Trump ban's ticket on Governor Walz's military service. Well, Laura, I'll tell you what I think. I think it's shameful. I think it's shameful that a veteran would attack another veteran. Uh, Governor Walz served honorably for 24 years in the National Guard. After 20 years, you are eligible to retire at any time you deem necessary. They talk about him missing his deployment. Well, maybe Mr. Vance should ask the real question. What is the National Guard doing deploying to a foreign country in a foreign war? Well, let's go into history and figure out how that happened. That happened because George W. Bush and Dick Cheney went into the Iraq war based on lies. No weapons of mass destruction, no ties to Al-Qaeda, nothing with 9-11, and they ran out of bodies. They needed more bodies. They couldn't implement a draft. That would be political suicide. So what George Bush did was sign an executive order sending the National Guard into foreign deployment. The
Okay, this is so basic because you are not going to get this history on CNN very often, but Jesse doesn't give a shit. He comes out here swinging and he's like, let's talk about 2000 policy. You know, this dude was amazing. And they, for people who don't know, Jesse Ventura was supposed to get a headlining show on MSNBC. They'd started filming. They were working. He'd already signed the dotted line. Well, guess what? George Bush goes and invades Iraq. Jesse's not getting down with that why would we invade a country illegally they didn't attack us i don't care what is going on over there i'm an american it has nothing to do with me oh you know they're killing babies in incubators that sounds fake right okay he says i am going to come out here every single day on msnbc and say as a navy seal as a united states veteran as a patriot and former governor i think this is an illegal war and they said no you're not we are going to pay you for your entire contract and never once let you on air so rare tidbits of jesse being so brutally honest about the united states political history and militaristic history particularly from the bush era to now they don't want to hear about what he has to say about obama because he has both credentials and a military background and a peaceful, you know, analysis of the situation. So anyway, I just wanted to give everybody that full context of what's going on here and how rare it is to see Jesse spit like this on air. Yeah, it's also a really good point that I didn't really think about. But he's right that the only reason the National Guard was being deployed in Iraq was so that Bush would avoid having to actually draft uh, people into that war. But if you're part of the National Guard, yeah, you're not signing up to go fight and die in Iraq. That's not the point of joining the National Guard. So, of course, Tim Walls didn't want to do that. And also, as Ventura said, uh, you can retire after 20 years. This dude served 24 years and was in the middle of preparing a run for Congress. He was already in the midst of a transition into another form of public service, going from the National Guard into a run for Congress, which he won, by the way. Um, so that's that's totally common. Uh, people knew that he was preparing to run for Congress. Um, it's not like he just chickened out like J.D. Vance is pretending. The National Guard is not for foreign deployment. Their name says what they do. They guard our nation from within. So this hogwash about Governor Waltz missing a deployment, not only that, he's 24 years, he's an E-9. I deployed twice. We never even had an E-9 with us when we deployed. E-9s are not going to walk the point. They're not going to be involved in any combat whatsoever. They're figureheads being the most senior enlisted within their company and that's what it's all about so i think that uh vance is doing a disservice to himself and a disservice to the united states marine corps i know a lot of great marines and marines show respect and vance is not showing respect and let's talk let's continue who does he have respect for donald trump the biggest draft dodger from the Vietnam War, the rich white boy who bought his way out of it. I come from South Minneapolis. My friends and I didn't get out of it. We either got drafted or we enlisted. I know six or seven or eight of my friends. Donald Trump was your typical rich white boy who didn't have to serve in Vietnam because he could buy his way out of it. And that's who Vance is standing with, this guy who leads from the rear. Then why do you... Burn. Oh my God, what an insane clobbering from Jesse Ventura. We'll finish just a clip, but I want to just take a moment and be like, what an ass whooping. Could you imagine being excoriated by Jesse Ventura, the body himself? The man was a professional smack talker on WWE. That's how he made a living. And then he was the shock jock radio host. People thought he was so compelling. They put him in the gubernatorial mansion. Could you imagine, guys, what kind of a life and career that is? This guy, he's something else. Yeah, yeah, truly, truly uh, amazing and and bringing it back to Donald Trump and what a draft dodging privileged little piece of garbage that Donald Trump was when uh, Vietnam happened. Of course, you know it's just it's just perfect and it's 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 so true also because it's like you know it'd be one thing if the top of the Republican ticket was like John McCain or like some truly decorated war hero, someone that had been captured and tortured, and then they could be like, see, we're real war heroes. This guy over here didn't even go to Iraq, but I mean. What ground do they have yeah. to stand on? What possible ground do they have to stand on to make that claim about someone who served for 24 years? That's like a quarter of a freaking century, guys. That's a long time to serve your country in the National Guard. And yet they want to say that because he didn't serve 25 or 26 years, that somehow he's a traitor. Somehow he's a chicken. Are you kidding me? Meanwhile, getting behind President Bonespurs. Yep. 
think, given all that you've described from the politics, the history, and of course, the person who's on the top of the ticket, who has been criticized for the bone spurs reason for not going to serve. And I, frankly, I have not served. I am a civilian and have the ultimate reverence for those who have and thank you for our, your service. So why do you think this is the line of attack to choose politically? Obviously, it would offend voters on one level and also people who have served the armed forces on the other. I don't know. You'd have to ask Mr. Vance that. I don't understand his motive whatsoever, how he could turn against a fellow veteran. Oh, I'll tell you his motive, Governor Ventura. His motive is that he was super, super salty and in his feelings after Tim Walls made that couch joke at the Atlanta rally. You guys might remember he said, oh, I'd love to debate J.D. Vance if he can get off the couch. LOL. See what I did there, right? So J.D. Vance seething, coping, sweating shitting he's quaking in his boots and he's oh how do i come up with anything to counter this these guys are making fun of me well i guess i'll just go disgustingly low then and question this guy's service to his country take a goddamn american hero in tim walls and somehow find a way to smear him and repulsive tim walls is everything that the republicans pretend that men should be right he's a community leader someone who's dedicated his entire life to service uh, you know, in one way or another. He's a manly man, a coach. He served in the National Guard. Literally everything Republicans pretend that men should be. He has a family. He's a family man. He's never cheated on his wife. All this stuff, right? Yet, again, because they're so in their own feelings and they're so offended based on a little meme and a simple joke that now they're going to resort to the lowest form of smear tactic imaginable. The most disgusting, just disrespectful yeah, it's, and it's, it's not working. It's not working. It's only working on the most deranged Republican brainwashed ideologues. And elections are about swing voters. Elections are about independents. They're about people in the suburbs. And this will drive them so far away. I'll tell you one thing you're not going to find a lot of in American general election politics, uh, a lot of success if you're taking swipes at our troops. OK, I'm a guy that's a peace activist. I'll go ahead and confess to the fact that I'm well aware of all the insane militaristic crimes of the United States. If I was running for office, I wouldn't be running on troops or criminals, OK, <laughs> yeah. because it would just be anathema to what everything you're taught to believe as an American. Right. And this is about building bin big tent politics. We live in a democracy. You have to get the most votes if you want to win. You have to appeal to the largest amount of people. And they're losing people who would be reliable Republican voters with this, you know, shots at a man who served his country for over 20 years. Yep. You know, there's there's kind of an unwritten rule amongst us veterans. You don't criticize another veteran. Not every veteran's a knuckle dragger. And I'm not going to define knuckle dragger because if you've been in the service, you'll know what a knuckle dragger is. But, you know, as a frogman in the United States Navy, my job was to ensure the Marines could get to shore to do their job. We went in ahead of them. We went in before them to ensure the Marines could land. And his point of being a Marine like he is and then criticizing the governor after 24 years of service, it's despicable on his behalf for doing that. And I hope all veterans feel like I do about it. You don't criticize another veteran and how they served, whether they're a cook or whatever they do, they all have a job to do. And if you're going to be successful, everybody has to do their job and pitch in to be successful. Wow, what a pitch for socialism, Gavin. The one other thing about Jesse Ventura, right, is that it's really hard to paint him as a lib, as a progressive, as like a knuckle dragger, right? Or, or as, or, you know, as whatever, right? He, he doesn't really fit either mold, right? And yet he'll come out here and he'll just say the most socialist, radical stuff ever. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what your job was. Everybody contributed equally. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. And I think that I, I personally, obviously, I'm not a part of the you know, veteran community, I'm sure you guys can tell. Um, but from what I've observed, at least online, I think uh, Governor Ventura is right on the money, you know, as far as the way other people that are in that community will feel about this line of attack. Like they had some asshat on breaking points last week to talk about why J.D. Vance 
you know, to accuse him of stolen valor and to repeat this BS line. I think it was a debate with Jake Uger. Usually the comment section on breaking points is pretty right wing. Most of the people there seem to be on the right. But actually in the comment section of that video, almost everyone was like, this guy should not speak for veterans. Uh, I'm a veteran and I totally understand why Tim Walls uh, retired when he did. There's a lot of reasons why people retire even before deployment. Uh, Tim Walls was apparently dealing with uh, hearing issues around that time, as we've talked about. Um, so it's possible he didn't feel that he was up to the job uh, physically with his hearing issues and other things. He was getting older at that point, too. Um, he was reaching that age where, you know, you're not in your physical prime anymore. And these are all things that people in the military understand, right? It's only these cowards looking in from outside who want to go with this line because they have no idea what they're talking about. They don't even know the fact that, yeah, if you're in the National Guard, you didn't sign up to go fight in Iraq. That's not the point. Bush only deployed those people so he didn't have to do a draft, as Jesse pointed out. Um, so I think that most people that are actually in the military community will understand this as a total smear and hopefully be disgusted by it. It's also not 2004 anymore, guys. Like people keep saying, oh, they're swift boating uh, Tim Walls. That's what they did to John Kerry. They questioned his military service and ran a whole campaign trying to act like, you know, he wasn't actually the war hero that he was, right? Uh, that was during 2004, the height of this jingoistic furor, the height of, you know, this uh, pro war fear. Um, of course, that was going to be a little bit better of an attack in that climate. That's just not where we're at right now. People don't have this massive sense of like, go American troops, let's go liberate Iraq and freedom warriors and freedom fries. Like it's just a totally different era. So for them to run this playbook now in 2024, when most people are like, yeah, war is pretty stupid and we should end them all. I just think it's not going to fly. It's like he forgot his own playbook for success in 2016, Gavin. It's yep. pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So well said. I think it's it's capturing the sentiment of so many people who are watching this. And there is the, the terms I can think of as kind of an ick factor of having people at each other in this way, knowing the nuance and knowing the fact that everyone has served and what's the number, like less than a percent, one percent of people have protected this nation over time. I do wonder, given your strong feelings and um, and the way in which he has been attacked in this way, and he is addressing it in various ways, it won't be the end of the story. You have endorsed traditionally third party candidates, although you did endorse him for his run for governor. Do you intend to endorse the Harris Waltz ticket now? Well, I'll tell you this, I met with Bobby Kennedy last winter. We met for three hours. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I came in I came in second. He chose his woman, Shanahan, his running mate. Uh, Bobby's still a friend of mine, but I'll tell you where I stand right now. I'm going to be selfish. A few years ago, I got the opportunity to see the United States elect its first black president. I didn't think that could ever happen. And they even reelected him. Well, now I'm going to be selfish again. I've only got a few elections to go. I'm 73 years old now, so the window's closing. I want to be alive to see the first woman president of the United States of America and the first woman commander in chief. And we've got her right now. So pretty crazy, guys. I mean, as we talked about and as that CNN anchor mentioned, Jesse is only pretty much ever endorsed third party and independent candidates. He broke that streak to endorse the governor of uh, Minnesota, Tim Walls, for his reelection bid. Obviously, Tim Walls won that bid. Um, and now, potentially, thanks to the fact that Tim Walls has been selected by Kamala to be included on the ticket, that's enough for Jesse to, uh, I think, endorse his first ever duopoly ticket for the presidency. Um, as you guys saw there, he uh, you know, put it on the table. He's he's endorsing Harris Walls, which is huge. Uh, I think that, you know, Jesse's the exact kind of person that this ticket really needs to be out there on TV making the case for them. And I mean, who better to make the case in just such a blunt and brutally honest shoot from the hip kind of way than Jesse Ventura? Yeah, it just shows how far the election has gotten away from the Republican Party. They have absolutely no appeal to people who aren't brainwashed by the MAGA movement. They have made themselves such a fringe niche online party. You have Donald Trump going on live streams with Aiden Ross. <laughs> you know, yes, Aiden Ross had to 
take back the Rolex he gave Donald Trump because he violated campaign finance laws when he accepted it. Like he can't take the Cybertruck either. You know what I mean? These people are idiots. They're not smart. And not only that, they're appealing to a bunch of you know misogynistic 12 year olds on the internet and then the most barbaric unhinged MAGA audience possible. You know, 